four counties at random, there's 10,182,480 ways you can potentially do that, just visiting four counties. You had 58 for the first choice, 57, 56, and 55 for the last choice. Raise your hand if you understand where those numbers are coming from. Good, okay. Now, is there an easier way to get here than doing this? The answer is yeah. We actually can do a permutation. with this. Because I want to be able to use that factorial, I want to apply it to our, our knowledge over here so we don't have to just think about this all the time and reinvent the wheel every time. Let me tell you some rules about permutations, then I'll show you a formula that's going to allow you to calculate this in one fell swoop. So, rules for permutations. Please make sure you know this is for permutations. First rule, your items have to be unique. You can't have any double ups. Okay, you can't have any double, up, double ups. What that means is with my fruit example at the beginning of class, if I had two apples, if I exchange those apples, well, that means that the different the ordering is really not different, right? I'd have two apples either way. The picture would look identical. Do you follow me on that? So in order for this to really work, to get a different arrangement, you have to have n different items. I'm going to give you another letter. I'm going to give you the letter R. R is the number of items you're selecting out of N to arrange. So for instance, in our example up here on the board, our N, how much was our N? How many different counties were there? N was 58. How many did we choose to arrange? R would be 4. Do you see the difference there? So N is the total number of different items. R is the number that you're selecting to arrange. That's the, the idea. So R would be the items selected out of N. The number of items to be arranged out of N. Last one. In permutations, order matters. Now, you, you might be thinking, well, why are you even saying that? Because all we're talking about is different arrangements, and that's true. We're going to be talking about one more uh, caveat of this probability stuff called combinations, in which order is not going to matter. So, with permutations, I need you to know that order or arrangement means a different thing. It means that even though you have the same items, arranging them, them differently makes a difference. Does that make sense to you? So, because maybe on the campaign trail, visiting Fresno before LA would give you a different outcome than visiting LA before Fresno for some reason. Maybe the timing would just work out different. So, that arrangement would matter for permutations. So, first, the items are different. Second, R means the number of items that you're arranging out of the N. And third, the arrangement or the order is definitely very important here. Arrangement or order matters. Now we're going to be able to come up with a formula for this thing. Uh, the letter for permutations, it's not very original. It's a capital letter P. So when you want to find a permutation, uh, by the way, does order matter or arrangement matter for permutations? So if you see that, then yes, order matters. The arrangements are going to be different. So this is counting the number of arrangements you have. You're going to have n different items. The n is going to go right here. And you're going to have 
are items you're arranging. Now I want to show you something kind of neat with this example, with this example here. Watch this for a second. I'm going to kind of bring, I'm going to bring this over here. If we visited all 58 counties, revisit this with me. We'd have 58 factorial different arrangements, right? But we're not. We're not visiting that many. This would be 58 times 57 times 56 times 55 times 54 all the way down to 1. All the way down to 1. What we're doing in this with this formula I'm about to give you is we're saying, okay, you're not visiting all 58 of them. In fact, how many are you not visiting? If you only pick 4 out of them, how many are you not visiting? 54. 54. 54. You're not visiting 54. You're not visiting 54 different arrangements that you could be doing. Use your multiplication of fractions and simplification of fractions to look at what's going to happen here. What I'm doing here is I'm taking 58 factorial and dividing away 54 factorial. I had 58 factorial different items that I could arrange, but I'm not picking or I'm dividing away 54 factorial arrangements that I'm never going to go to. So this 54 factorial, look what happens to this. You know you can cr cross stuff out, right, fractions? The 55s are going to cancel. The 53s are going to cancel. The 52s, I'm oh, sorry, the 54s are canceled. 53s, 52s, 51s, all the way down to the 1, that's all going to be gone. Do you see what you're left with? We left with exactly what we thought we were going to have over here. Here's how this formula works. The formula says this. I hope you're, kind of, you're going to kind of see it on, on this example once I give you the formula. The formula says take the number of unique items you have. That's going to give you the number of different arrangements. Stick with me here, folks. If you have n, n different items, n factorial gives you, gives you the arrangements of all n of them, right? That's what we've been doing this, this whole time. What you're going to do down here is you're going to take away the ones you don't need. The ones you don't need is everything except the r that you've chosen. These are all the arrangements that you don't want to look at. In our case, in our example, we had 58 counties, sure. That would be 58 factorial different arrangements we could originally go to if we went to all 58. But how many arrangements don't we need? We don't need the 58 minus the 4. That's our 54 of them. Those 54 arrangements, those are getting canceled out. Those are going to 1 uh, when, when we take our numerator denominator. Because we're, we're not going to those 54 counties. We're only going to the first 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. How many people understand that? Feel okay about it? Good. So for us, if we wanted to write this out in the example that we just did, you'd have 58. We're finding how many permutations of, not R, sorry. What was our R in our case again? Four. Four. We have 58 different items. We're finding how many permutations of four items we can make out of that. So how you'd write this, you'd say, oh, okay, here's 58 factorial divided by n minus r, notice how that's in parentheses, n minus r, you do that first, that's order operations, and then you do the factorial. 58 minus 4, factorial. Guess what? Once you do this little step, you've got 58 factorial over 54 factorial, and that's exactly what we did right there. That's exactly it. This would be the 58 times 57, times 56, times 55, 54, 53, 53. This is 54 times 53, 52, 51, 50. All those things will cross out. You have multiplication of numerators, multiplication of denominators. You cross all those things out because you have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. What you're left with is this piece of information. Exactly what we had over here. Not your head if you're still understanding that. That's kind of a big step for us. So we have, okay. You sure you get it? You sure? You sure you sure? So here's our formula that we have for permutations. You're right, by the way, without 58 counties. Oh, I am? Yeah. I thought I was. I love being right. 
Anyway. <laughs> Do you understand the formula? Do you see where it's coming from? What's this? Well, I know that means factorial. It doesn't mean n, right? It doesn't mean that. But what, what is this? What does this signify, n factorial? It stands for the number of what's? These are the items. What's n factorial? n is the number of items you have. n factorial is the number of different arrangements you got. This would be the number of different arrangements if you had n items, all n of them. What's this do for you? This takes away the arrangements that you don't want to consider. That's what this is. That's why you're doing n minus r. The r is the ones you, listen, r is the ones you want. You want the r arrangements. n minus r would be all the ones you, you don't care about. That's those arrangements. That's why they're canceling out, okay? Would you like to see how to do this on a calculator? Yes. Of course you would. Lights. My Wayla, you are my light lady today. Thank you. Perfect. So we turn our calculator on. Go up to your main screen. So we, we already accomplished 7 factorial. We know how to do that. What you're going to do on this particular type of calculator, you're going to punch in the N that you're trying to deal with. Punch in the N you're trying to deal with. So for us, that would be 58. After that, you're going to go to math, because hey, we're in a math class. You're going to go to probably, you're going to be over here, because we're in probability. We're going to go down to, what's the formula they gave you? What was it? NPR. It's not here, right? That's just factorial. We can make this even easier. Go to what you have written on your paper right now, NPR. You've written out the N first, that was a 58. Press that button. It gives you NPR, your N's already listed. Then you're going to list out your R. In our case, our R was how much? And this will calculate it for you. Pretty sweet, right? Pretty sweet. It is totally magic. It's not like this thing has programming or anything. I mean, it's just a Harry Potter box is what this is. <laughs> Does this have it too? Perhaps. Perhaps it does. Uh, do you see down here above your factorial by a couple spaces you have this NPR? Do you see it? Unless I jiggle it like that? First place happening. Okay. So we press our 58, same thing we did in the last calculator. Press your second button because we're dealing with the yellow letters. NPR, then you press your four. Same number. Okay. It'll still do it no matter what calculator you have. So, is it possible? Can you have a question? Is it possible to calculate this way? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. This will work every single time for you. Uh, the only difference is, what if I had like 58P and then I did like 32? Okay, if I did 58P32, then what you'd be doing is going 58 times 57 times 56 times 55 times 54. That would be very annoying, wouldn't it? Because I'll tell you what, your calculator will not calculate 58 factorial. You can't even do 58 factorial on your calculator and then divide by 4 factorial. It's too big of a number, it won't handle it. But that way, if you use the NPR, um, it'll take the shortcut for you and then you'll be able to calculate your number. Tell me what we what we talked about today. Feel okay about it? Good. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, we'll do one more example uh, on this next time. We'll talk about when items are not unique when items are, are not unique and see how that changes what we what we do.